Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Red Dirt Rods. Now this week we are working on a 1974 Chevy El Camino. This project came to us as a partially finished build and they brought it to us, asked us to finish it up for them. So it's a really cool project. It has a custom built engine that was built on Horsepower TV a number of years ago. We've got a ton of stuff we've got to do to it. We're gonna wire up a fast fuel injection system. We're gonna show you how to measure for drive shaft. We're gonna show you a bunch of really cool stuff on this project. But this week, we're getting started under the hood. We're gonna take the hood off and we are going to plumb the radiator. We are going to run transmission cooler lines. We're gonna install a new rag joint on the steering linkage, and we are going to install the, this factory Chevy Performance accessory drive, and we're gonna show you guys how to do it for your project. So this here is our 74 El Camino project. Under here we have a John Bouchard built small block Chevy. We've got a fast uh, throttle body injection system uh, with the intake and everything set up, ready to go. It just needs to be wired up. We're using this Chevy Performance accessory drive. This is basically a stock accessory drive that Chevy sells or they used to sell. I don't think they actually offer it anymore. Pulley in here. So we're gonna get this installed with a cleaned up power steering pump. Once we get that installed on the engine, we're going to start laying out the uh, radiator hoses. We're going to run some transmission uh, cooler lines and get a few of these other things tidied up so that the car looks a little bit better under the hood. Okay, so one side was already put on, so we're just going to drop this on. There's a stud here in the block. This just slides on just like that. And then this here should line up along with that. We just need to find a couple of bolts that will go all the way through here. Okay, so from there, basically we need about a three inch bolt for that one. And this one, we're gonna need a one inch. Um, although I'm noticing the water pump's not bolted in. Okay, so there's a few other things that need to be done. Okay, now we can put We'll put our accessory drive on. Right, now we can drop this on. We had to remove a bolt that was down here on the block. That is a blind hole. So we don't need to do anything special. Got a washer and a nut. It's easier said than done. This pulley needs to come off. This is the kind of stuff you deal with when you take over somebody else's project where stuff is half done so you never really know exactly what you've got to do and we don't have instructions for any of this stuff so it's kind of just a figure it out situation okay go ahead and torque everything down okay you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna replace this one i don't like this long bolt here We've got this really cool silicone mat that I picked up from Harbor Freight. I really like it. I know a lot of people trash talk Harbor Freight, but they've got some really handy stuff. And no, I'm not sponsored by Harbor Freight. But that's available. And this has a washer head on the nut, so I'm not gonna put a washer behind it. Okay, okay here we go feel like that bolt was a little short and starting to strip to be honest and I don't want to strip the block ah, there we go there we go feel much better about that here's a cool trick for tightening the water pump bolts take a wrench put it up 
and come up to the next stud. And you can use that to keep it from spinning. Here we've got the power steering pump. I've got brand new bolts. I need my silicone job. And that's why this thing is so nice. Okay, there we go. Get the first one lined up. She uses three of the four available bolt holes. So what I like to do when I'm making radiator hoses is I like to use aluminum tubing and this is about eighth inch wall aluminum tubing and silicone boots. I buy these off of eBay and these fit perfectly. This slides up. I, I put this on my lathe and I turn it down. So we would be looking at something along the lines of this. So this will come down and then we can rotate this how we want. We can rotate this however we need. Come down and make that. So, so what I usually do is put the pipe in about an inch and a half, which is right about there. I'm just gonna put a mark. Okay, slide that in and then get this aligned about where we want it. Mark where this will be and I'll cut it a little bit long so we've got a little playroom. We know where about that's gonna be. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do there's not going to be much pipe left on this anyway, so I'll go two inches on this one as well. Like I said, just to give us a little bit of wiggle room on the final fitment. So on these, what I like to do is come a half inch in and I make a 9 16 groove about a 16th or so deep. Little red scotch bright just to knock the shine down. Now you can always polish this if you want. Uh, we're just trying to give it a satin look to match the semi-gloss finish of the car. There we go, that's one. Here's the other, we'll do the same. So I'm just gonna pre-install these get a couple of hose clamps on here. I always like to face my hose clamps the same way. I like to hide the hose clamps whenever I can. So put this in right there. Bring this over, pop it in just like that. How far, there we go. All right, I like that. Now we just need to do the same thing for the bottom. Okay, so for down low, we're gonna use a 45 right here. That's gonna match up with the chassis. And then I think another 45 right there will work. For the lower, all I need to do is make a couple of really short three inch uh, couplers to go inside. We're just gonna butt the silicone up. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing we did on the uppers and we'll clamp these together. Let's make magic. 